Let's look now at how to calculate our linear correlation coefficient from a set of data. Now there are a lot of stats packages and graphing calculators that will just report these values to you, but if you're required to use a formula, I want to be able to show you how to plug in the information in order to get these values. Now here I have a data set where I have our x value and our y value, and what we first would do would be to draw a scatter plot to see if it looks like we have a linear correlation that exists between the values. If it looks like we do and we want to find the approximate value of that and not just guess it from looking at the scatter plot, we'll want to run our values through this formula for our linear correlation coefficient r. And remember, since we're doing this information and calculating it from a sample set of data, we're just going to have our statistic r that we get for the linear correlation. Now, recall some of these symbols that we're going to have to look at in this formula in order to plug in the right values. First of all, n. n is the number of ordered pairs that you have for your problem. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs. So in this case, our n is equal to six. Now, when we have the capital sigma, that means to add up, and then right after that is the x times y, that means for every ordered pair, I want to take x and multiply it to y, get the product, do that for all the ordered pairs, and then add all of those together. So that capital sigma means to add up, and x times y is add up all the products of x times y within each ordered pair. In the next set of parentheses following the minus sign is to add up all the x's. So add up all the values within your independent variable. Here is to add up all the y's. So we'll add up all the values of our dependent variable. In the denominator of the square root, our n again. And then inside this parentheses is the total of the x squareds. So here I want to square each x value, and once I square each x value, add up all the squares of those x's. So we'll take like 4 squared plus 15 squared plus 3 squared plus a 10 squared plus 15 squared plus 9 squared to get that value. In the next set or expression following the minus sign, notice how I have the summation of the x, which is in parentheses, and then the square is on the outside of the parentheses. Here, I want to add up all the x's, so take 4 plus 15 plus 3 plus 10 plus 15 plus 9, and then square that total. So you have to be really careful about the subtle distance difference there. And then the same thing under the square root of the second factor in the denominator, just with the y letters. Now these I've um, worked all out, and we have that r is equal to, n again is the number of ordered pairs, which is 6 times the total of the x times y. So if I take 4 times 9 plus 15 times 17 plus 3 times 8 plus 10 times 11 plus 15 times 14 plus 9 times 12, that gives me a value of 743. Then minus if I add up all the x's, if I take 4 plus 15 plus 3 plus 10 plus 15 plus 9, adding up all the x's, I get 56. And then times, add up all the y's, 9 plus 17 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 12, that gives me 71. And now my fraction bar. And in the denominator, I have the square root of... Again, n, which is 6, times, square each individual x, and then add up all the values of the x's once you square them. That's 656 minus, and now I'm going to take the total of my x's. We already talked about the total of the x's, and that was the number 56. And that number gets squared. And then lastly in the denominator, the square root of n, the number of ordered pairs, 6, times the square of the y's, and then total that up, 
And when you take 9 squared plus 17 squared plus 8 squared plus 11 squared plus 14 squared plus 12 squared, that value gives you 895 minus the total of the y's, just adding 9 plus 17 plus 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 12, that is 71 and squared. Now be careful when you run this through your calculator. If you have more than one term in the numerator or more than one operation in the denominator, you need to let, make sure to open your set of parentheses at the beginning of your fraction bar, entering this and closing, and then hit the divide by key for your fraction bar, open a set of parentheses, and then open your radical. You're going to get an automatic open from that in your calculator, so you need to make sure that after you do this, you close that radical before you open the next one, and go through the process and close the denominator at the end before you hit enter. And you should get r is approximately equal to 0.93951. And a lot of times we approximate this to three decimal places. So if I have one, two, three decimal places here, that's a nine, and the very next one over is a five or bigger, it's a five. So I would need to round this up, but rounding nine up would make that a 10. So there'll be a zero here, it'll carry one into the next column for a four, and then my nine. So my R is approximately 0 0.940 for this data set. Now, a couple things here I want to remind you of. Um, if you do these individually to be careful and then put them back in, make sure that you don't round your individual calculations to three decimal places and then keep carrying those on because that oftentimes will propagate error further into one, to what the number, um, further into what you want to approximate it to. So make sure you use the memory capabilities of your calculator so that you don't leave round until you get to the very end. Also, when we're looking at this value, notice we got an R that was a positive number, and 0.94 is relatively close to 1. So that is a very strong, the dots will be tightly knit along the line, and it's positive, so a very strong positive linear correlation between these variables. In another segment, we'll look at how to test to see if that's significant enough at a given alpha level to determine that we can use that model in a prediction that would be dependable. But for now, this gives us our linear correlation coefficient using the formula to calculate it.